what kind of world do I want to live in? I think about this question a lot. For our generation and for specifically my group of people, which is refugees, the circumstances might dismantle any vision of the future that we have. You're trying to rebuild, you're trying to make a future for yourself, and then the climate related disaster comes and you start again. It's not about how it's affecting you now, it's about how it's affecting you your entire life. First step to understand is that we're all a part of it. None of us are going to be left out by the crisis. We're at a stage where if we don't act now, really there won't be very much left. There are generations that will never see certain things that we grew up seeing in real life. We have to start treating this like the emergency it is. To achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, we have to go from an intention to a serious commitment. Business leaders really need to rethink how they conduct their business and invest in creating systems that are climate friendly. I would like to see is accountability. Structures being put in place where countries aren't just asked to do something, but they're kept accountable to the decisions that they make. There has to be that strong collaboration between government, between corporations, between youth activists to drive change forward. The world I would want to live in is a world where imagining the future is not a privilege. I want to live in a world where people do not give up on hope, hope that a positive change is possible. The fact that you're listening today means that you are willing to make a change. Hello, and welcome to the Uplink Daily. I'm your host, Emanuela Rossini, joining you from the Sustainable Development Impact Summit here at the World Economic Forum in Geneva. In this session, we're excited to announce the top innovations from the World Class Education Challenge, a global call for solutions that will widen access to education and ensure students have the skills they need to thrive in the jobs of the future. The COVID-19 pandemic dramatically disrupted the education of students all over the world, but it also gave us a glimpse into what learning in the future could look like. With so much experimentation, we must now uncover what worked, which schools and teachers were best equipped to deliver virtual learning equitably. How did educators reach those without access to technology? What new skills became a priority for learning and how are those skills taught? This Uplink Challenge, launched in partnership with Deloitte, was a search for the solutions that can answer these urgent questions. Let's watch a video to find out more.
Class Education Challenge was launched with Deloitte as part of its ambition to help 100 million individuals access quality education, skills, and opportunities by 2030. To help make this goal a reality, Deloitte will be investing up to $1 million in the form of pro bono support and financial grants to support the top innovations that we're going to announce today. To tell us more, we're now going to hear from Deloitte CEO, Punit Ranjan. Thanks for speaking with us today, Punit. Hello, Emanuela. It's an honor to be part of the Forum's STI Summit. Today is an exciting day for Deloitte as we announce the top innovators for the Deloitte World Class Education Challenge. This is a unique opportunity for the winning cohort to work alongside Deloitte professionals to help address the global education crisis. In May, we reached out to educators, entrepreneurs, and innovators across Africa, India, and Southeast Asia, asking them to share their ideas to address education inequity, and they answered the call. We received many ideas from individuals and organizations who are passionate about disrupting the status quo. And we thank all those who put such time and energy into their submissions. We've invited the winning cohort to participate in a year long program led by Deloitte and supported by the forum that will give visibility to their solutions and scale their impact. The top innovators are an impressive group with the potential to create lasting impact in their regions. Their passion and creativity give me great hope for the future. We are at a critical juncture as a society, and now is the time to take urgent action to address growing education inequity. This is why Deloitte doubled its original world-class goal from 50 million to 100 million lives impacted. We understand that we can't leave anyone behind that we must continue to connect innovators with expertise, resources, and networks that can help scale their ventures and accelerate their impact. And Uplink is an incredible tool to do this. There is no one person, organization, or government that can solve today's challenges. We must all act boldly together and inspire others to do the same in pursuit of the future we want to see. And those we recognize today are doing exactly that. So congratulations to our top innovators and thank you for leading the way. Thank you so much for sharing those inspiring thoughts with us, Punit. We're also joined today by Michelle Parmalee, Deloitte's Deputy CEO and Chief People and Purpose Officer. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Emanuela, for having me here today. Could you tell us why closing the education gap is so important in terms of global development and why it's so crucial that businesses like Deloitte play an active role in finding solutions? When we launched the World Class Education Challenge back in May, I spoke about how education is fundamental to progress. It empowers, it uplifts. Here we are a few months later, and the challenges of COVID-19 are still disrupting students' education worldwide. And unfortunately, it will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. Educational inequity is growing, and the difference between the privileged and those being left behind is widening every day. Younger generations are demanding accountability from businesses like ours. They are persistent and vocal. They question and they upset the status quo. And they remind us there is still a lot we can do. Our education challenge is an example of what is possible. We received 370 solutions from innovators in Africa, India, and Southeast Asia. This reflects the deep desire of innovators to tackle the education crisis and the real need in these regions. These innovators are delivering real results for students and teachers against all odds. They are addressing inequalities, the digital divide, and the empowerment of educators, among other issues. We are excited to work alongside the selected innovators to bring their ideas to life and scale their solutions. These collaborations will build on Deloitte's world-class initiative. We are seeking to support 100 million individuals by 2030 in accessing the quality education, skills, and opportunities required for the future of work. 
we doubled our original goal, recognizing the pandemic's significant impact on education globally and challenging ourselves to do more. We have reached 20 million people to date. A big congratulations to the winning cohort of innovators. I'm excited to see the impact we can make together. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us today and for your perspective there. Now, as Michelle just said, we had an amazing response to this challenge. Almost 400 solutions were submitted through the Uplink platform. And now, the moment of truth. It's time to announce which of these solutions were chosen by an expert panel to become top Uplink innovators and to receive the support that Poonit and Michelle just spoke about. Here are the names of the top Uplink innovators for the World Class Education Challenge. Congratulations to all of you. Joining me in the studio now to discuss this exciting list of innovators is Audrey Chitawe from Deloitte, South Africa. Welcome, Audrey. Thank you for having me. Now, 370 innovators answered the call to address education inequality. That's an incredible response. So what do you think that tells us about the critical need to close the education gap, especially in the developing world? It speaks to the educational crisis that we're seeing across the continent, which has been further exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. We find ourselves in a peculiar position, trying to solve for basic educational needs, while also trying to compete in a global market in the midst of a fourth industrial revolution. So a number of our African countries have reported low literacy and numeracy levels, and yet we still need to be competing in a global market. The other aspect that I'd like to sort of bring to your attention as well is there's a very popular proverb in the African um, continent that goes, it takes a village to raise a child. And we believe a similar approach would actually work in terms of solving for the myriad of educational challenges that we're seeing across our African continent and building an ecosystem of different innovators that are coming together to solve for a common educational challenge goals. Now, 12 finalists were chosen from Africa, India, and Asia. Which of the innovations announced here today really stood out to you and why? So from the Africa uh, continent, we actually selected five innovators and I'll speak to a few of my favorite ones. StanLab really stood out for me. It's a 3D virtual uh, lab experience that actually takes up a virtual construct of a physical science lab. Why this is particularly important in our African continent is the fact that we've seen a low uptake of STEM subjects across the continent. And I, perhaps this could um, offer an opportunity for students across the African continent, even those in underserved communities to begin to explore science subjects if, if the lab costs could then be reduced. And I think this particular innovation offers a compelling proposition. And if I had to incorporate another one would be it's Learnable. Learnable offers an interactive platform for both teachers, students, and also importantly, the parents, where the parents can actually track their learner outcomes of their children by accessing the different materials and tools that they've actually accessed on their particular platform. But I think the other important thing is in most cases is we often tend to focus on the delivery of education and not necessarily the learner outcomes. And I think Learnable addresses that and that it keeps a track record of how the child is actually progressing versus the content that they're actually receiving. If I had to squeeze one more in, and I must say, it has been extremely difficult narrowing it down. Park would come in for me as one of the solutions that also stood out. It focuses on upskilling children and students across the African continent in robotics, programming, and coding, and then actually equipping them to solve for some of the societal challenges that they're seeing by encouraging them to actually build solutions that solve for community challenges. And I think that is a, day, a game changer as well within our African continent. Now, what do you hope these innovators will be able to achieve through their engagement with Uplink and Deloitte? I'm hoping they will be able to achieve a sustainable real impact within the communities and solving for the educational challenges that we see within our communities. That is the first aspect. I think more aligned closely to our world-class um, ambitions here at Deloitte. Globally, we seek to impact 100 million lives and locally in Africa, 20 million lives by 2030. And if the cohort would be able to solve for some of those challenges and really make a meaningful impact, I believe that that would be success for them. Thanks for joining us, Audrey. And now for our final interview of this Uplink Daily, we're going to talk to one of the outstanding innovations that was selected from all of those submissions as one of the top innovators for Uplink and Deloitte's Education Challenge. Congratulations. Can you introduce yourself and your innovation? My name is Bayou, the founder and CEO of Commerce. 
So commerce uh, is a platform that connects between SMEs in Indonesia uh, to the village that have been trained in e-commerce field. So we train uh, the youths in e-commerce field like uh, digital marketing, customer service, how to manage social media, marketplace, and etc. So with this innovation, we hope to contribute the unemployment and uh, reduce the urbanization from the rural to urban area. We focus on educating the youth in e-commerce field. And then after the youth graduated from our training, we focus to the SME that uh, want to hire the youth so that uh, the youth uh, can get a job opportunity uh, that hire by SME across the nation. What inspired you to start the company? My hometown, my district that I live in that village uh, is uh, still in the top 10 uh, lowest income district in Central Java, Indonesia. So that I decided to resign from my previous works in a big city and come back to my hometown to elevate unemployment and urbanization. You know, in Indonesia, the unemployment was rising up almost around uh, 20 hundred the composition of uh, urban people coming from the rural people so that uh, inspired me to build a commerce what support or resources do you need to take your innovation to the next level the number of SMEs in indonesia is 60 million SMEs, and uh, we started in four years ago and i hope with Deloitte and uplink program they can help us to scale more impact more youth that hire by SMEs and also we plan to expand to another country that have a similar uh, segment of uh, SMEs. Well, thanks for taking part in this edition of Uplink Daily. We wish you and your team all the very best for the future and we're excited to start working with you. I want to thank our audience for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to have you all with us. For more on the future of education at the Sustainable Development Impact Summit, you can tune in to the session Closing the Pandemic Education Gap later today. We'll be back later today to bring you more exciting announcements from Uplink and its partners. We'll see you then.